however now that the uk is considering bringing back the post study work visa if by the time you go for your visa interview and then that law has actually been passed then you can confidently answer by saying i consider a personal statement and educational cv naku how did you get your uni accommodation whilst you were in ghana hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is naku alute and i create content around study abroad lifestyle fashion beauty as well as vlogs if this sounds like something you are interested in then do well to hit the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel for weekly consistent videos if you are a returning viewer thanks so much for coming back so in today's video i'm going to be answering some questions that i received from you concerning study abroad some of you sent me dms on instagram some of you also left your questions in the comment sections of my previous study abroad videos so in today's video i'm going to be answering all of those questions so now let's get straight into the questions sorry if i keep looking down but i'm reading the questions um, from my phone that's why i keep looking down so if you see me like continuously looking down that's the reason why so the first question says what is the difference between credibility interview and visa interview i haven't received my cast but my credibility interview is on friday so this person is trying to find out the difference between a visa interview and a credibility interview in our case where it's a study visa or it's a student visa the interview is actually called a tier 4 credibility interview which is the same as a visa interview because the credibility interview is is just a visa interview so it's actually the same thing so if you've received an email saying you have a visa interview and it's in relation to school or um, studies then obviously it's um your credibility interview so it's the same thing and then the person goes on to ask i haven't received my cast but my credibility interview is on friday if you have watched my previous study abroad videos i kept stressing on the importance of having your car statement before your visa appointment there's no way there's no way you would be granted your student visa if you don't submit your car statement so i advise that before you even go ahead to actually book your visa appointment and all of that make sure you have your car statement because that is one of the most important documents you need to have make sure your car statement is ready because without your car statement there's no way you are going to get your visa though you've already had the offer from the school and all of that i explained all of this in my previous study abroad videos so you can check out my study abroad playlist watch all of them carefully and make sure you are prepared before you go for your visa appointment cas actually stands for confirmation of acceptance of studies this is a, a document that the school sends to you after you have met all the conditions of your offer that includes making an initial tuition fee deposit so until you have done all of those stuff like meeting all of the requirements uh, meeting the conditions of your um, conditional offer there's no way the school is going to send you a car statement and there's no way your visa is going to be granted without your car statement so please and please again make sure you have your car statement ready before you go ahead to book your visa appointment or your visa um, interview or your credibility interview so the next question says what will you do after school can you give a little insight into that so for this particular question i believe they asked you this question to actually make sure you don't have plans of like um overstaying your your stay or yeah overstaying and that you are going to the uk and you need to study so for this question you can answer along the lines of um you come back to your home country to find a job that's related to what you went to study in school however now that the uk is considering bringing back the post study work visa if by the time you go for your visa interview and then that law has actually been passed then you can confidently answer by saying you would stay to search for a job in the UK after your post study work visa has been acquired or after you have gotten your post study work visa because then you would have every right to stay in the UK to search for a job or to work because the post study work visa would be for 2 years and then it allows you to work legally in the UK so if by the time you go for your interview and this law has been passed 
then you can confidently answer by saying this the next question says naku thanks a lot for this video can you tell me something about the tier 4 visa where do i get the acceptance letter and did you write a personal statement okay so first of all she asked if i wrote a personal statement yes i did a personal statement is one of the requirements or one of the things you need to do or need to write when you are submitting your application i consider a personal statement an educational cv so yes i wrote a personal statement and most universities require you to write a personal statement when um, applying for admissions so definitely you would write a personal statement when you're applying to the university for any program of your choice um, i would do a detailed video where i will take you to um, how to write a personal statement what a personal statement is how to make your personal statement convincing enough so that you'll be granted admission so this is something you should watch out for it will be going on my channel very very soon also she asked about acceptance letter and where do you get the acceptance letter from an acceptance letter is written by you the applicant so after the university has agreed to grant you admission um, they send you your conditional offer the university expects to know if you have accepted that conditional offer or they can give that offer to someone else so an acceptance letter is basically for you to let the university know that yes i still want the offer and that you are going to meet the conditions of that offer the conditions of the offer include um, a reference from your from a lecturer from the university or from a teacher from your shs depending on the level of education it also includes um making your initial tuition fee deposit and all of those stuff so the acceptance letter is basically for you to let the university know that you have accepted the offer that they have um, granted you and that you are going to meet the requirements of the offer the next question says um hello i got my cars today and in my email i think this person is not like Ghanaian or this person's first language is not english so it's i don't know so let me read it how i understand um hello i got my cars today and in the email um well so basically what this person is trying to ask is um who conducts the credibility interview um, the person is asking if it's the university or it's the embassy so i would say the embassy because the, the university is not the one conducting the interview however the car statement is provided to you by the university after you have met all your all the conditions of your offer so yeah it's conducted by the embassy not the university the next question says naku how did you get your uni accommodation whilst you were in ghana okay so for my university after i had um gone through the um, application process received my offer met all the conditions of my offer made my initial tuition fee deposit gotten my car statement and all of that i got an email from the accommodation team um yes so that was how i got to know or that was how i was able to um, choose my accommodation pay for it and all of that get it sorted out before even arriving in the uk also they have an accommodation um, section on the school's website which makes it easy for you to actually have a look at um, the accommodations available and all of that i believe with most schools they would also have the um, accommodation or they'll have an accommodation section on their website which will allow you to know the types of accommodations available as well as um, the amount as in how much how much it costs per week and then how much you'd have to pay in total and all of that or better still if it's not on the school's website and after you are done with like all of the meeting all of the requirements of your offer you can send an email to maybe the admissions team or um, international team to ask about accommodation i believe they'll be able to assist you when it comes to that so yeah you should check from the school's website to see if they have um, a section for accommodation and that will make it easier for you to actually get your accommodation sorted out even before you get to the uk this will prevent you from getting stranded so yeah okay, so the next question says now what if you did english proficiency in uni so um, one of the requirements when you are 
um, appliances study abroad they ask for english proficiency to know how fluent you are in english however for most of us who come from english speaking countries um, it's quite flexible for us because some schools would not even um, expect you to pro uh, provide one or produce one because you come from a country where english is your first language also for us Ghanaians, our uh, wasi results also suffices for that so you can use your wasi results in place of like a proper english proficiency test so all you need to do is to send the school your wasi results um yeah because um, english is one of the subjects we write during wasi so they just need to know your grade you had in english and that would suffice for an english proficiency test so the next question says i need the process for undergraduate please um i would say with undergraduate it's basically the same um, process or it's basically the same procedure so if you've not checked out my video on the processes and requirements for study abroad it will appear somewhere up here just click on it and go watch the whole video however um some of the documents might be different because um, if you are applying as an undergrad, obviously they would expect that you um, submit your WASI results, not your transcript or your certificate from your first degree because you don't have a first degree. So there will just be some slight changes here and there concerning the documents you are supposed to um, present. Aside that, the process is very much the same. So do well to check out that video where I explained everything. The process and then the requirements okay guys so that's it for today these are the questions that i got from you um if you do have any other questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below feel free to send me a dm on instagram at naku alote on instagram and i'll probably do a part two to this q a or just answer you in the comment section or through my dms so feel free to send me any other questions that you have and, and don't forget to check out my study abroad playlist because i have very detailed information on studying abroad the processes requirements um your documents that you need to have um the study abroad documents list possible questions you are likely to be asked during your credibility interview so please do well to check it out if you do want to study abroad it's something that you need to check out before you start your whole study abroad process and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video with your friends i'll see you in my next video bye